After using the MacBook Pro M4 Pro for three weeks, I've decided I'm returning it. But before I jump to conclusions or start ranting in the comments with oh, you only order it to make videos, hold on. Let me explain. And spoiler alert, the reason I'm returning it might actually surprise you. And so, in this video, I'm sharing everything about my experience with the M4 Pro during these three weeks, and most importantly, why I decided to return it. All right, if you're not familiar with Apple's latest launches, the MacBook Pro M4 Pro is their newest Pro laptop, powered by the M4 Pro chip. And let me tell you, it's an absolute powerhouse. Compared to last year's M3 Pro, the M4 Pro takes everything to the next level. It's faster, more efficient and comes with some great upgrades. You're getting more CPU cores overall and what's even better, more of them are performance cores. 8 compared to 5 on the M3 Pro. You also get 2 extra GPU cores, 24 gigs of RAM compared to 18 gigs on the M3 Pro and almost double the memory bandwidth, jumping from 150 gigs to 273 gigs. Now, these numbers might sound technical, but trust me, you'll feel the difference in performance, and especially when tackling heavy tasks like video editing or multitasking. And the benchmarks confirm this. In Geekbench 6 tests, there's a huge improvement in both single core and multi core performance. And this year marks the biggest jump we've seen since the introduction of the M1 chip. In the metal tests, it's the same story, a significant boost in GPU performance, which is fantastic for graphics intensive tests. When it comes to ports, it still has the same number as before, but now they are Thunderbolt 5 instead of Thunderbolt 4. So what does that actually mean in practical terms? Well, Thunderbolt 5 supports DisplayPort 2.1, which allows for much higher bandwidth. This means smoother performance when using high refresh rates or connecting multiple high-resolution monitors simultaneously. That said, for most people and creators, Thunderbolt 4 is already more than enough. It's been more than sufficient since the launch of the M1 Pro, and even the M3 Max still uses Thunderbolt 4. Plus, there aren't many Thunderbolt 5 devices like external SSDs or hubs available just yet, and the ones that do exist are incredibly expensive. So while Thunderbolt 5 is nice to have, it feels more like a feature for future-proofing at this point. There's also an upgraded 12 megapixel webcam with center stage, which is great for video calls, and the display now supports up to 1000 nits of brightness in SDR compared to 600 nits on the M3 Pro. So if you're working in bright environments, this can make a huge difference. And other than that, not much has changed. You still get the same build quality, the exact same design. Apple is clearly sticking to their winning formula here, and honestly, I really don't mind it. And so for the past three weeks, I've been using this MacBook every single day for a variety of tests. From light work, like writing and browsing, to heavy duty video editing, this machine has handled it all flawlessly. I've been editing videos in Final Cut Pro, working with S-Log3, 4K, 10-bit, 4 to 2 footage, and I can confidently say this laptop doesn't even break a sweat. It's a joy to work with. And if you're interested in those real-world tests in Final Cut Pro, I'll leave the link in the description. Battery life has also been impressive. For light tasks like writing or web browsing, it lasts me between a day and a half to two days. When I'm editing videos or doing more intensive work, I get about six to eight hours, which is still pretty good for a laptop this powerful. And so everything I said in my initial review still stands. This is hands down the best bang for the buck MacBook Pro Apple has ever released. You get more performance, faster speeds and 24 gigs of RAM. More than enough for most users, all at the same price as before. So no brainer here. Now for those of you who've been following the channel, you might be wondering how does it compare to the M3 Max? And honestly, for the type of work I do, the performance difference is minimal. The M3 Max is faster in video exports, thanks to its two video encode engines and two ProRes encode and decode engines, as well as its higher number of GPU cores. But for day-to-day -day tasks, the difference is barely noticeable. As expected in benchmark tests, the M4 Pro dominates in CPU performance, both in single-core and multi-core results. However, in the GPU department, it falls short compared to the M3 Max, which is expected given the extra GPU cores on the Max. Now, that doesn't mean the M4 Pro isn't good. As I said, the only real difference I noticed was in the export times. For everything else, 
the experience is pretty much identical. And so if everything has been so great, why am I returning it? Well, it's because I love it so much. Yes, that's right. So here's the thing. I've decided to exchange this base model for one with one terabyte of SSD storage and 48 gigs of RAM. Why? Well, because I want the convenience of handling large video files without relying on an external SSD and to future-proof it for years to come. And that's really the only reason I'm returning it. For me, this upgrade makes sense given my workflow, but that doesn't take anything away from how incredible this base model is. So here's my recommendations. If you're in the market for a new laptop, the MacBook Pro M4 Pro is an absolute no-brainer. It's fast, it's powerful, and probably the best value MacBook Pro Apple has ever offered. That said, if you already have an M2 Pro or newer model and it's still handling your workload well, there's no need to rush to upgrade. Those machines are still amazing and will serve you well for years to come. So let me know in the comments, are you considering the M4 Pro or are you sticking with your current setup? I'll see you in the next one. Take care.